It's EP4 of 1K to 1M Plus. I'm your host, B -b 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 Brian Stormed. Wait a second. This isn't a game show. Why did I say it like that? Wait, wait. What, what is that? Is, is that a line? Wait, why is that showing up? Why, why am I buying it? Because I just sniped one for 150k, that's why. Last week, I showed you guys a neato burrito trick on how to snipe collectibles with ease, and now I'm employing that same trick on these evolution cards. Every time I sniped a Lane or a Matthews, I would go and uh, check out his current price, and I would always make sure that I have the lowest price card on the auction house so that my card would sell the soonest. Using 2020 hindsight, uh, yeah, I could have held on to these cards for a little bit longer. Now they're going for like 400K. But if you snipe a card and you can immediately flip it for like, in this case, 50K profit, then you're, you're gonna do that immediately. I think maybe you could hold on to them if you have a lot of money but I'd only have enough money to buy like three more of these. So I just want to get rid of them as much as fast as possible. I noticed after I bought that Matthews, I already had another Matthews up on the auction house. So I waited a little bit before throwing the second one up so that they're not competing with one another. And if I got undercut, then I could undercut someone else as well. And now time for the big kahuna. That's a 40k Matthews that I just sniped. There was also another Matthews for 20k that I sniped, but I didn't record it in time. It just barely cut off. And then here's Alani, 175k, that's still good enough. And I can sell them for 250k. So th these are some huge flips with these Evo cards. The greatest thing about the Evo cards is a lot of people think that they might be like the base cards because they're blind or something. Here's one for 110k that I derped and then I couldn't get it in time. So sad. But yeah, people will put up these cards for like nothing. It's an 86 overall card. Oh, that must mean it goes for like 10k at most. No, no, it doesn't. Same idea with Wierenski, Gensel, um, Talbot, Raquel. You can get a lot of big snipes just by following these cards. And if that wasn't enough i'm about to snipe a malkin no wait no i'm not I, I i went back look at that number on the top right that is a million we got there in about three weeks which is uh almost twice as fast as i did last year and now we continue on because this isn't 1k to 1m plus or no wait it is it isn't 1k to 1m it's 1k to 1m plus here we have murray bottom for 5k all of them are going for 10k at the time of this video so i throw them up for that last year my go-to method was the special edition card so i'm trying to get back into it and i start with the team of the week mcdavid card who's going for like 300k and i see one going for 240k so i scoop him up and i throw him up for 280k but it's not the price that i was selling him for that matters because i get this trade offer and look at how much time is left on this trade we're down to 40 seconds. I'm like defusing a bomb trying to figure out if this is a good deal or not. But guess what I have? I have this spreadsheet that I made to see the prices of all of the base cards and a bunch of other cards as well, which is still getting updated daily. And if you want to use it, just check out the link in the description. And that spreadsheet is a lifesaver because otherwise I would not have been able to figure out the prices of these cards in time. That is a good deal. Don't use the prices that were in that screen screenshot though. I, I took that screenshot like two weeks later. At the time McDavid was going for 155, 160k so I throw him up for 150k and I make sure that since I'm dealing with six digit numbers I take my sweet time to make sure I have all of the digits and it's not like 15k instead of 150k. So Burns went for 60k, Ben for 90k and I end up getting 20k extra than the price I put McDavid up for which is pretty amazing. And then I get this Niedermeyer for 150k, throw for 175k that's great and all but it's at this point where i have too much money and i am starting to make boneheaded beginner mistakes starting with this curry and actually for most of the rest of this video i'm going to be talking about my mistakes so that you guys can learn from them Le learn from them learn from them learn from <laughs> oh my gosh said it again learn from them so the market last year was a fluctuating one base cards would go up they would go down they would go back up down back up and this year 
it's nothing but going down. I buy these two Marchands for uh, 20-ish K. I notice the rest of them are going for pretty close to 30 K. So I'm like, okay, let me wait a few days and see if his price goes back up. Historically, cars are at their cheapest when there's a lot of packs being ripped open, like a lot of special cards out, a lot of special uh, packs that EA kind of released. And I do this with a bunch of cars. I buy this Weber. I buy like eight Phil Kessels, three Matthews. I buy two Tyler Sagans and none of their prices went up. EA just kept releasing more special edition packs and more cars just kept coming out. They finally fixed the patch where you could exploit the solo challenges and get a ton of free cards, which if I wasn't affiliated with EA, I would have told you guys a long time ago, but I didn't want to like be banned or anything. And I held on to these cards for like a week, maybe two weeks and it, I just wasn't seeing any progress. So I took a huge loss on all of them, maybe like 10 to 20%. I think these Matthews were like the only like pretty decent ones. So it's really risky to deal with this kind of market, like hoarding your player cards. It worked last year, this year. I don't, I don't know, man. Maybe later on in the year. Maybe it's too early for that. And then on top of it all, the fact that I had a lot of money like held up in these cards, that meant I couldn't use that money to flip even more cards which meant my opportunity cost was pretty high. Another boneheaded mistake, Numenen came out. Love this guy from the earlier NHL games. Still rocking the Robo Coyote jersey. That's awesome. But I decided to buy his card on day one. I thought 115 was a good price when the rest of them going for like 150k. And no, do not ever do that. Do not buy a Legends card on day one of release. The price of Legends cards just keep plummeting throughout the year as more and more show up because they're available in packs throughout the whole year unless you find one for like 20k don't do it all right now day one of flashback collectibles another bonehead mistake you see i'm i'm flipping these collectibles buying them for like 30k okay that's great selling them for like 38k okay i i just uh sold a card i got coins so that must mean it's going pretty well that is until everyone starts ripping open packs and then like selling all their collectibles at once so all of a sudden the price of these collectibles are just going straight down the toilet to like the 20k mark so i do this i pick up like maybe what six collectibles right no wait those aren't mine uh i don't know however many collectibles and i realize i made a huge mistake that's costing me like 200k right now the smart thing that I should have done was sell these collectibles instantly for a loss of maybe like 2k each and then I would have had my money back but I ended up holding on to these collectibles until the next week where the price of the collectibles went back up again which was not the smart thing to do because I could have used those coins where I got my uh, money back to buy the collectibles for even cheaper the good news is I did pick up uh, a good amount of these flashback collectibles afterward for like under 15k here uh to kind of recoup some of my losses i decided to just uh throw them into the flashback set so that i can sell the koivu for a little bit over the price that i paid for for the collectibles so i got my money back for at least four of the collectibles just by doing this and i get the master collectible too which is nice and then another bonehead mistake which actually wouldn't be a mistake under normal circumstances but it was this particular week i'm like hmm not a lot of koivus got thrown up on the market i'm gonna buy a few of them for a fairly cheap price hold on to them until they the prices of them go up and then sell them which would be fine but they released a 91 overall koivu legend card like on monday so that sucked. And the 90 overall Koivu tanked, and I lost money. You could probably do that with Flashback Gabrick, even though a lot got pulled. He's a really good card, so a lot of people will want him, and his price will probably go up. But that's only if you can buy him for like around 100k. Enough of the boneheaded mistakes. Here I'm going to show you guys a new maybe make money method. Maybe make money because I don't know if this will really help you guys make money. In the video right now, I am scooping up all the jerseys for under 250, and this method is brought to you by Tom fucking Cruise. That's right, the star of Top Gun and Mission Impossible found his way into my YouTube channel. I I'm famous now. Tom, if you could like have me in your next video, that'd be, that'd be amazing. Wait a second, er, next movie, not next video. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. So with all these jerseys that I scoop up for 250, you go over to this exclusive jersey set where you throw in five random gold jerseys 
and you get a special jersey that you can't pull in a normal pack. 5 for 1 jersey gave me this black and orange Flyers jersey, which I don't know the price of right now. I do this a few more times. I get a Coyotes jersey, a Dallas Stars jersey, and if you notice, a lot of these jerseys look almost exactly the same as the normal jerseys. Turns out that the normal jerseys are the ones that you don't want to get. You want to get something like the Seals or Team Sweden, any kind of countries really. And that Flyers jersey was actually a pretty good pull. It sells for like 15k, so I end up throwing up for like 10k. The method... It's about hit or miss, but it seems to be more hit than it is miss. I spent like, what, 7k on jerseys, and this Flyers jersey just made up for all of that. The Seals jersey, I think I had a tough time selling for 3k, but the Sweden one sold pretty quickly for like 4k or 5k. And then you saw Team Canada, I mean, he was selling them for like 30k. So give it a shot and see what it's all about. That'll do it for this video. Next week, we'll talk about hoarding collectibles. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments.